It's a fantastic, first of all. Oh, that's a phenomenal Pilsner malt. This beer is the, exactly what a Pilsner should be in all aspects. Ah, it's so good. It's got sweetness, it's got graininess, yep. but without being full. Welcome back to the Genus Brewing Channel. Today we have got something special for you. We have taken out all of the filler and added it back in. By filler, he means minerals. We're going to start with a blank slate here. Uh, I usually say if you're not going to do your own water chemistry, build up at least with a little bit of tap water, even if you are doing this style of beer, uh, which, by the way, is a... Pilsner style beer today, specifically uh, more along the lines of the Bohemian style Pilsner. An extremely soft, easy to consume beer, but the catch with it is to do it properly, you have to seriously do some water cam. So we are starting from scratch today because our water otherwise is way too hard. Yeah, just like... So to start off with, <laughs> let's, uh, let's start with our water. So what we got right behind Peter's butt is um, some store-bought, well this is store-delivered, I guess, Crystal yeah. Springs water. Um, so this water is uh, as close as to distilled or deionized water as you can get. Um, it's going to have super, super low minerality to it. Uh, so that's going to be kind of our base. Um, and then from there we are going to add just a little bit of tap water to our mash. Um, and then we're also going to add our water salt. So let's start by putting about four gallons in our mash and boil um, for this Pilsner style beer. Side note, you'll need about this much total water to get your five and a half gallons post boil. And by this much he means somewhere in the range of eight to nine gallons. Peter's got three and a half gallons of our distilled water to start out with, and this is just a half gallon of our tap water. We don't, we don't really need much. What the tap water is going to do is it's going to add a few of those just kind of trace minerals, minerals that uh, the yeast need to ferment out this beer with that you're not really going to get, especially if you're using distilled water. Uh, if you don't know what kind of tap water you have, another way to do this would be to um, definitely add a little bit of yeast nutrient because that nutrient is also going to give those trace minerals. At this point, uh, we now have right around four gallons, yep, just a hair over above four gallons in our mash and boil, so that's going to be our uh, strike water that we're going to heat up, uh, but we're not going to heat this right up to a rest that you do for to a sacrification rest. We're actually going to do another rest here, and it's going to be just a hair over 100 degrees, um, about a, between 100 and 110, I believe, is ideal. Um, and that's called a ferulic acid rest. Uh, and because this malt is so light, um, we actually want to do that. That's going to allow some acid to come out. It's going to get the right balance for a mash pH. So I'm going to go ahead and get this right up set to about 110 degrees right now. And uh, we'll check back on Thumbs up if you like this. <laughs> anyway, uh, while that water's heating up, now we're over here doing our water salts, right? And yep. we're not going to do a whole lot of them. What we assumed is that uh, we're starting out with zero mineral content, even though that's not exactly true. Um, but what we're going to do is ballpark because, Peter, what amounts are we working with here? Uh, we're going for, uh, I think we got half a gram of this, half a gram of this. Which is calcium bicarbonate. Calcium, uh, calcium carbonate, oh, not carbonate. bicarbonate. Uh, half a gram of sodium bicarbonate, and then a quarter gram each of gypsum and calcium chloride. And that should land us somewhere into this water profile. <laughs> Up in front of, of our, our faces. Face. Jinx, five. Ah, but yeah, it's a water profile for pills in Germany. Um, probably the softest water profile in the world. Yeah. Um, like second to Logan. Make a comment if, if you have a softer water profile. Wait, what? So that's it. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and tick, tick, tip these. Yeah. yeah, we'll tip them into it. We'll weigh them out first and then get them into our mash and then yep. uh, get going from there. Yep. I'm going to get some close-up shots now of Peter actually weighing this out just to show you all how small this can get. Peter. Like, what? Easy. Way too much. Didn't even want to talk. And that's it. So that is literally all the more salts that we are throwing in. That is a pathetic amount. Water stuff. Make sure you knock all that off in there. Every last bit counts because there's not very much of it. Alright, good there. Put that on the head. Sounds good, I'm always multi-talented. Alright, and then we're just gonna get this 10 pounds-ish of floor malted Bohemian Pilsner. So just to recap, we're sitting at uh, about 105 degrees right now. So cup one down. Ryan had good boat time, everybody looked at the genus brewing. So we finished out our uh, ferulic acid rest and uh, 
uh, which all we're using for the perulic acid rest is going to help with our mash pH since this is a single malt, light malt style beer. We don't have a lot of acid adjustment uh, with that. Uh, now we're going up to a protein rest somewhere in the 120 to 130 degree range. I think we got it set for 130, but it'll you know float up through all those temperature ranges. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, break down the big proteins that cause haze and then also uh, can reduce your head retention. And it's also going to provide amino acids, which are good for yeast to eat. Chomp, 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 chomp. Sweet, so we'll check back in about, what, 20 minutes or so? Sure. And, uh, because that's how long this rest is gonna go for. Yeah, nap time. Bam! 20 minutes is up, and, uh, I have already turned our temp up, so we are now approaching our sacrification rest, which I have set right at 150. So we'll go through all that temperature range on the lower beta amylase, uh, rest, and we'll get all the way up to where alpha amylase starts. Then we'll kick it all the way up to a mash out temperature, and, uh, one thing we're noticing already is as we're recirculating, because of the protein rest, we're getting no channeling and no, no sticking at all, so it's actually funneling through really, really well, so. And it's already cleared. Yeah, and it's already clarified, so you, that's, a lot of the haze forming proteins have been broken down, which is a really good sign for a nice clear beer. Um, is that it? We'll check back with you in... 45-ish? 45-ish. Yeah. Recording? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm uh, doing my last research here. Uh, we actually already got up to a mash-out temp of 170. It has been over an hour. I would yeah. say. And, uh, so, we, so we did our sack rest and then we waited uh, almost an hour and then we uh, cranked it up to mash out temperature of 170 and that's probably took another what 20 minutes or so of uh, yeah. recirking. Uh, Not too bad. So now we're about to pull that out and sparg the water and uh, I got uh, the rest of that big container heating up on a separate kettle in the back just to save us a little time. Yeah it's still gonna be that same neutral water though so it's gonna be that same low profile all Shbibbity. Bam! So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull out this mash pipe and uh... Well, I'm gonna get the water. We're draining. Now that I got my mash pipe pulled out, I am also going to set our temp for over boiling, which is 209 degrees here. Watch as I grab some water. Oh, just sparging like I normally do, just grabbing normal water. What are you doing? I'm just doing normal pitchery things. So this is now up to a boil. It's been boiling for over a half an hour now. Uh, just to kind of give you guys an insight on something we like to do because we know it takes a while for our wort to chill down with an immersion chiller. Uh, whenever we're using an immersion chiller, we'll actually delay our quote unquote 60 minute addition because some of that time during chilling, it does count into the, the bitterness and flavor you get off the hops. So our first addition on this is gonna be some Pacific Jade. Uh, it's gonna be our 30 minute addition. Uh, typical hop for this style of beer would be Saz, but you know, we can't be all traditional, so. Pacific Jade it is, and this is just a quarter ounce. <laughs> All right, so now we are into the last 15 minutes. We're gonna do our second hop edition, uh, more Pacific Jade, uh, just a half an ounce this time. So uh, that should push our bitterness right up into that hopefully low to mid 20s range. Um, we didn't calculate it, but we had some Pacific Jade left over, so that's what we're using. It'll be in the recipe when we figure it out then. Uh, I'll post it below, you got it. <laughs> Bam! I'm also going to uh, grab the chiller. Smart move. We skipped it to a couple steps because we got a little busy here in the shop, but we got to flame out basically and we added one ounce of saws before we started chilling down. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. All we have left to do is to chill this down and we're gonna transfer this on top of a yeast cake that we did what with? Let me, let me go grab my, my card and tell you what yeast that is. <laughs> we did an awesome uh, smash beer that's gonna have a lot of great information for you guys that you'll be tasting, hearing about at some point in the near future. Oh yeah, totally know what yeast this is. All right. Um, it definitely didn't get wet. <laughs> uh, Munich lager, Bavarian lager, and Urkel. But yeah, I don't know if you need to see the rest of this part of the brew day, but uh, that's already when we're chilling this down and we're gonna put beer into a fermenter. One more thing before we finish this whole thing off, it's always really important to care about yeast health. And so even though we just pitched on to a big old yeast cake, we're gonna still go ahead and oxygenate this and make sure that we're giving our yeast every possible advantage. Um, give them a chance to reinvigorate and uh, put them in a lower stress situation than the beer that they were previously on. Um, if you're looking for some of these and you don't know where to find them in your area, uh, welding supply stores are always a good uh, bet. Uh, homebrew supply stores might have them and I'll post some links below for Amazon if you need to, to find the diffusion stone and the oxygen one and all that. Let's go get some beer. You know, some days you just feel like drinking a nice, crisp, fresh, light beer, you know? Some days it's a scream that that's what you need. And usually February in Spokane is not one of those days. But here we are, folks, and it has been three weeks. 
Beer has been in a keg for two weeks, conditioning, and uh, let's see what it tastes like. Oh man, I dove right in and that is delightful. Uh, immediately on the nose, you get uh, a lot of that classic, what you would expect from uh, any German style pill is just a touch of that sulfur and then a lot of that lemony, grassy kind of hop profile from yeah. using those kind of hops. Yeah, every single thing about this screams Pilsner. Uh, you know what's one thing I'm also picking up is the malt comes through so well developed on oh, this yeah. beer. Uh, and I, I actually contribute that to the water chemistry. I think that yep. the fact that we did a true water profile actually, instead of having that minerality that most beers we brew here have, uh, it allowed the <coughs> malt to come through. It's got this distinct rich grainy sweetness to it but also still i mean it's it's hard what kind of it's not sweet but it's it's rich yeah it's exactly it's it's, it's smooth and it's it's pleasant and it's got a little bit of that kind of like fresh grain uh flavor fresh grain flavor um so soft so soft that that's all water chemistry uh turns out that if you do want to brew a traditional pilsner style beer uh water chemistry is essential I think is what this experiment has come down to. Yeah, because we've done the exact same style with just our own water, and it does come across that minerality really brightens and pops it and makes it a more aggressive beer. This is sessionable. It's really nice in the palate, but it's uh, it opens up enough that you can get all the flavors that you're looking for in this kind of beer. Well, I think that about sums up our quick tasting here because we are, quite frankly, freezing our butts off and our camera's getting wet, so there's that too. You know, all good signs, but uh, <laughs> we appreciate you watching this one. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, give us a thumbs up and a smash of the subscribes and some uh, high five your computer really hard, and then uh, we'll see you next time. On Genius Brewing, Viva La Beer. Viva La Beer. Bow. <laughs> Viva La Beer! Whoa, thanks, Peter. About time. Follow us on all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, RedTube, any th anywhere you can find us. Schmection. Child, shush. Uh, speaking, speaking of. Around here, we always tend to be a little bit hard. And it, you know, and uh, we'll show you a little bit about he just likes to use the fact that he knows that our boiling temperature is slightly under the actual boiling temperature at sea level. Which is why it says 2009 every single time. 2009? Hashtag, how do we keep these things dry? I got snow in my boot tie. <sighs> <sighs> Till next time on Genus Brewing. <sighs> <sighs>